Goodwin from G Designs and welcome to Happy Friday. Sorry, Mike wasn't on for the first try. Yes, you may uh, realize Mr. HP is not here, not checking up on us. So we are on our own. Me and Andrea are in the studio. We even have live audience from um, a friend, my best friend from 12 years old from Iceland, Inka. She's here. So say hi to Inka, Frida, for me. Thanks for being here, everybody. You are all watching live from either Facebook or YouTube. So if you're new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button or hit the like button and make sure you get notified whenever we go live. You won't ever miss a show. Thank you, thank you. It's Friday, 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 of course. Give us some thumbs up and hearts, especially Andrea. She needs, she needs her support doing uh, the show by herself for the first time. Yay! Yay, she's doing great though. So of course we're gonna celebrate the weekend. It's the weekend. And so we are going to crank out a brand new recipe for this time. Some really great fresh raspberries in the stores now. So I made a raspberry martini. Very simple. You gotta make some simple syrup by yourself though, which it's the best way. So I just made some simple syrup, a cup of sugar, a cup of water and until till the sugar is melted in the in the saucepan then you turn it way down throw in some strawberries for a few minutes let it simmer strain it and then you know add some vodka some lemon juice a little bit of cranberry juice and there it is beautiful color tasty tasty cheers everybody mm. so very good so good I highly recommend, like I said, homemade simple syrup is always the best, and you can put whatever flavors in it. I, uh, it's just the best way, and it's really fresh. Uh, you can really taste the, the raspberries that way. So I hope you're having a good week. It's been a great week at GE. If you missed our Tipsy Tuesday last uh, this week, make sure you go back and watch because it was a busy show, lots of information, lots of tips. I think you do not want to miss that. So, of course, no word of the day today because Mr. HP is in L.A. He's got a gig on Sunday night, so he's missing from the studio, but it's all right. We got girl power, girl power. We're going to get this done. Um, so let's talk about the quilts behind me. I have a Taylor quilt behind me. I really, really love this, the colors in this bundle. It's from the Wild West bundle. Now, don't let the name scare you if you're not into, it's not like really Wild West. There's just a couple of fabrics. One fabric has uh, boots on them, not necessarily, I mean, just really cute boots. And then the other one has, uh, that refers to anything in the Wild West, it actually has a, a girl, cow, well, a cowgirl riding a horse. Everything else is kind of more Southwest, I feel like. There's some chickens. It's really cute fabric. And just a little hint, hint, sneak FYI, this is going to be in our newsletter as our perfect pairing for this, this uh, Friday. So that means the bundle is already discounted, but if you purchase it, you get the pattern PDF for free when we ship the bundle to you. So check it out. Check out our newsletter. Make sure you sign up for the newsletter if you don't, if you haven't yet. Um, then, oh, I wanted to say the quilting pattern on this one is called Random Clamps by Urban Elements. I love it. We use it so much. It's got that little wave, um, not so regular like clamshells or Baptist fans. It's kind of a little bit more random, so it kind of gives you a little more opportunity not to be perfectly perfect on the fans. And I really love that effect, what it does. So in the corner, you might remember if you watched Tipsy Tuesday, I have the Helena quilt made from the Modern Background Bundle and our Workshop Bundle. So this one is actually, we got it quilted this week. So I can't really see it up close. The quilting's not on this photo, but uh, we used a pattern called Bobbing for Apples. And it's really cool. So we'll, I'll have to show you again once we uh, get some good photos of it, ones of the quilting. The binding's not even on it yet. I just had to hang it up for you guys. Um, so then we have um, on the cabinet 
Kobe's laying right below it, <laughs> is a brand new table runner kit. So this is our off-kilter runner and made it out of some wonderful patriotic fabrics, Americana from Wilmington. And so this is a, a brand new kit available in the store. And of course the pattern is quilt as you go, very easy and included in the kit. You get all the fabric for the, for the front of the quilt, the binding and the backing. All you need is batting. And then you also get the pattern as a PDF and a video class, all included. I think that's a great deal because you can get this done in the evening, especially when you have the class for me to help you along the way. Even if you're a beginner, really, really easy to do. So snatch up one of those because it looks gorgeous on uh, your summer table for 4th of July. All right, so our big, big thing today, of course, um, is going to be our color club reveal of the color of June. So I will let you know before I show it, for those of you that still want to be surprised and don't have your package yet, so just, um, I'll give you a heads up, but I wanted to talk a little bit about our Tipsy Tuesday episode from this week. So what I did, uh, our topic on Tuesday was how to create scrappy backgrounds and, and um, instead of using one fabric as your background, gave you lots of tips on how you can manage doing scrappy backgrounds, some things to avoid, some things to consider based on how wild you want that background to be. And so make sure you check it out. I talked a lot about low volume fabrics and those keywords that matter when you are going to do a scrappy background. There's value, there's contrast, there's the volume of the fabrics, and then there's the scale of the pattern that you choose. So these all kind of come into play when we're choosing those scrappy fabrics because um, you know, we want to keep all those intact so that you can still see the pattern that you're sewing. So I don't know if there's any uh, remaining questions. I answered a lot of questions during that show, but I'm sure there's going to be remaining questions. So do you see any questions popping up from last week? Um, we have uh, also just, if you didn't notice, we had all of our low volume fabric bundles discount it this week and that's going to expire on Sunday and some of them got snatched up real fast we sold out of quite a few but there's quite a few still left great ones like Tim Holtz and other great things so um, check that out before before uh, Sunday or no before Monday morning so through Sunday all right um, let's see do you see any questions popping up for you Andrea I don't see any that's great. I love it. I uh, would love some tips and examples of scrappy colored backgrounds. You know what? Really the same things apply. If you want a scrappy colored background to appear um, like, you know, like it's one fabric, but with the variety, all the same things apply. So you want to think about value, not to stray too far. And you want to think about contrast with the other fabrics. It's really everything the same will apply for that as well as low volume. So colored fabrics will have volume too based on the actual pattern of um, that fabric. So watch that show again, check it out, and you know it will apply for dark backgrounds, light backgrounds, colored backgrounds, all the same. All right, um, so um, let's see. No more questions on my end. I can't see any. Well, that's good. It's all good. Everybody's saying hi, Inga. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, a lot of you were talking about how you needed to bookmark that episode. And I'm going to be talking a lot more in, in the next few Tipsy Tuesdays about, you know, the way I pick fabrics, about why I sell and make half yard bundles what you can do with the half yard bundles as we lead into introducing you guys to my new book that's coming out um, step by step getting closer so exciting and we will start sharing some sneak peeks real soon i will have an announcement for a quilt along real soon as well so uh, make sure you bookmark those episodes make sure you set a reminder for our lives so the other other good reason to watch our lives, of course, we have a giveaway every show. So the more you comment, ask questions, 
the better chances are to win uh, one of our $25 gift cards. So with that being said, that being said, are you ready for Color Club Reveal? Our June, this marks our 13th shipment. We celebrated last week our full year of Color Club. So now we're heading into year number two, kicking it off with our June color. So those of you that don't want to see it, want to be surprised if you haven't gotten your package yet, this is your official warning to turn the screen off, go to the other room for about 10, 15 minutes, all right? So I got my package right here, ready to open it. So let's go to the overhead and see. The inspiration for this month was, ooh, what is it? Let's see. <gasps> Kiwi! Yes, Kiwi was my inspiration. Um, this fruit was uh, named kind of with because of it, its resemblance to the fuzzy brown kiwi, the actual bird from New Zealand. So this delicious fruit has been one of my favorites since I first had it. In my 20s, yes. I was all in my 20s when I first had kiwi. You know, we didn't have all the fancy fresh fruit in Iceland when, gr when growing up because it all had to be shipped over. Um, so I had my first kiwi in my 20s. Now, I love this fresh green color. It's bright and rich without being, it's not quite lime green, and um, but a similar meaning it connects to nature it connects um, promotes freshness and uh, imagination relaxing and conveys some warmth and well-being just like what it would be to eat kiwis every day so let's check out the fabrics that are in this pack lots of variety so I'm gonna start with the one in the back of course so this top one is a, a Kaufman, a beautiful basic by, uh, I think this is by one of Elizabeth Hartman's basic. It's just called Paint Box. Paint Box Greens, and uh, I love the little specks of a darker green. It's such a rich, deep, deep green, but still keeping it, its brightness. So this was uh, in the back. The next one, I really loved it because it reminded me of the actual cut kiwis. So uh, this is Circle Burst. This is a Wilmington. So just a tad bit brighter. As you know, I like to have a little bit of a hue difference in our, in our Color Club packs. So they're not completely identical, so a little value difference little shade difference here we have a thatched color it's called spring so just a little bit duller than these two and then we have sparkles in uh, the color is called bright lime although this is not lime to me this is more kiwi of course and I love because the print has the lightest tones of the kiwi and the darker hues and then that medium color is is just that perfect green and there, then we have our fifth color is just gorgeous. This is a free spirit fabric and it's called Textures in Pebble and the color is called Lime. This is by Sue Penn. It was actually from a collection um, that we were able to snatch up and I just love, love, love this one as well. So these are our five colors. I, of course, in every pack I talk about pairings and you know what, what's so cool when you think about pairings, you can look at this, you can look at the actual fruit. And so you can just pair this color with some of the light centers, light colored centers of the kiwi, some of the brown textures of the skin or the charcoal color of the seeds. And you have a really great, perfectly coordinated quilt. But of course, this looks great with some blues and violets, lavenders, anything like that um, will we'll look great with it. So we, of course, have these available in One Yards. If you're not um, in Color Club, you can get these in the One Yards. The one that we don't have is the thatched at the moment. We will get it in later. 
Circle Burst, and the Paint Box. So they are all, these four are available in our one yards. And of course, every time we do Color Club, I go into the, sh the, the um, warehouse and look for bundles that these would just fit in automatically. I love to show you the versatility of the Color Club because this is what it's for. You're supposed to keep these in your collections. They're supposed to be there for you, just like paint for a painter, to pull into other collections um, to enhance to play with, not necessarily make one quilt out of all of them. So let's have some fun with this and see where this one would fit. Of course, I'm going to start with some of the floral bundles where, where they, there is a little bit of green. Um, so this is Botanical Journal. It has a couple of green prints in here. So these would just fit in perfectly. Um, and you know, some of these bundles are in our specials or in our sales section, so you can get great deals on some of those. The other one is the Art of Beekeeping. Of course, purples and lavenders. I mentioned how they are great pairings with this color. And so where there's a couple of greens in here, so this would be great with some more greens added. A tulip Tango. Even though the greens here are a bit lighter, a bit limier, these would work perfectly to uh, kick it up a notch because those colors are already in here, the deeper colors in some of the prints. So... These would be great um, with a tulip tango. I'm just going to throw these down here so we can fit them all. So then uh, one more. This is Homestead. This one is in our sales section. There's one green in here. So this would be great to add in here for some more color because uh, it's kind of prevalent throughout the other prints. Uh, then we have some fun geometric prints. Impressions. This is one of our newer bundles. A really cool artistic textures. There's only one green in here, but there's green in all the other prints. So any of these would work great, and especially with that speckled texture. The pebble or the paint box would just work perfectly in here, automatically, like they were just a part of it. Um, then let's check out some fun ones. So I pulled this Flamingo Bay. I talked about how pinks Lavenders, fuchsias uh, would look great with this green, and look at that. All the greens in here, this would be perfect addition as an accent um, to use with the Fun Flamingo Bay. Also, this mixology, the cocktail bundle, has a lot of that hue in here, so that would kind of calm things down, bringing that color in without, you know, losing the brightness and fun of, of the patterns in here, of the prints. And then I pulled this one, Love is in the Air, because we did talk about low volume fabrics. Even though this is not technically a low volume bundle, they're all kind of lights, all kind of prints would have a lot of color. So you could pair any basic with it to calm it down, to create that focus and make a beautiful quilt. That's Love is in the Air, so it has like a little bit of Paris theme to it. So then um, some fun bundles for kids or active active adults game day there's one green in game day which would match perfectly with any of these greens to add some more green in here also because they're all very textural and geometric these would all work perfectly uh, silent sports is another one this is focused on hiking and kayaking biking motor um, yeah bike bicycles and what else oh Hiking, oh, and, and rowing, yeah, so all those silent sports. There's only one green, but there's green throughout, and these these are almost gone, I know. They have been hot, so just a few left. Um, and for kids, it would be great for kids, so Rollickin' Robots has that really great green in there to add some more because there's green everywhere. And also, school is cool, and that one just has black prints and white prints, so you could add any color basic. So this one is awesome because it's fun. They're all fun prints. And that green is like the perfect, perfect addition. Then I did pull some uh, kind of seasonal ones because this type of green would work great for fall stuff. So this pumpkin harvest has that really bright green in there that would just give it a lot of pop, a lot more calm. Another one that's on in our sales section. Of course, uh, 
Our St. Patrick's Day holiday. Perfect. Luck of the Irish. This is Hello Lucky. We still have a few of those. Uh, then another Halloween, hometown Halloween. This is a bright green, so so very kind of close to that lime green, that potion color if you were working anything with Halloween stuff. And last but not least, who is this color? Who is this color? Of course, the Grinch. It's the Grinch green, so it will work really well with the Grinch bundle if you're doing anything fun with the Grinch. So such fun great green colors so yeah this is June Kiwi I hope you like it I it was fun to see your comments on Facebook how this was one of your favorites and um, I think you some of you say that every month so that's exciting that we are you know already 13 months in and you're still loving every single pack so that's uh, beautiful of course unfortunately color club is sold out all of our spots are taken at the moment but uh we will have lots of spots opening up next month so just hold on another month and we'll have lots of spots open opening up um and then also if you are not able to join us right now go check out our link on our website under color club we have some of the monthly bundles available for individual purchase you know some of them we've gotten extras it's just depends on how much fabric actually comes even though you ordered the same amounts it just it just varies so check that out if you wanted to snatch up some previous months all right so any questions on our color club we do have a question okay great great what is the question would this green be considered a medium volume yes I would say it's a medium you know of course uh, volume you know it's it's a scale but it's not a set scale it all depends on what else you have so we always want to compare it to what other greens you have but I would say this is a medium volume you know but again depends on what else you put it with it it might be the lightest volume if you put a whole bunch of darks with it uh, it might be the darkest value if you put a whole bunch of lights with it does that make sense uh, well, yeah we're, we're talking about about value not volume right didn't you say value a Vol volume uh, volume this these are pretty quiet because these are basic so volume that's when we're talking about how busy the print is sorry I thought I thought I read value value but volume means how busy the print is so go back and rewatch um, so these are pretty quiet in volume because all most basics that are tone on tone are not going to be that loud it's when you add more prints and possibly more colors into the print that's because when they come become louder so that's when the volume goes up does that make sense yeah it's I know they're very connected but still very distinct okay all right um, really enjoy your ideas for bundles to go with the color club that's good to hear because I, you know I always try to educate how this how color club is supposed to work with other stuff so I like to show you whatever we have on our shelves that this will work with because also sometimes maybe you have that bundle and you'd be like oh that's where I can mix that green in or uh, I need a little something extra here and there so love to hear that you are uh, liking the tips so let me have a sip because that was a lot of talking <laughs> a lot of talking Mm. Any more questions on the color club? It's more like a comment, but mm. it has a lot okay. of a question in it. I would love to see a fa fabric swatch on the color club card. Once the fabrics are shuffled, it's not always easy to figure out which fabric is which to order more of a specific color. You know what? It's a matter of spacing for us, and so we chose not to do that, but you know what you can do? When you get it, cut a little bit off the salvage and either glue it or staple it to the card just and it doesn't even have to be right there it can just be the order so or take a picture of it take a picture of the fabrics in the pack before uh, before the got and also let me remind you if you get confused you we have a blog post a running blog post if you go and just look for color club a color club blog post will come up where we list every month 
and with swatches and what they are. Links to the actual one yards if we still have them. So check out gequiltdesigns.com, click on the blog, or just go to the search bar and type in Color Club blog. You'll find it. All right, so we uh, always try to keep things organized so you can easily go and find the information that you need. Okay, all right, so I think uh, if there's no more questions on Color Club, let's check out some of our new bundles. And I love, love, love this one. We haven't had a ballerina fabric bundle yet, and this one is, has the best name because it's Dear Stella. They have the best, best name. It's called Too Too Much Attitude. <laughs> there's never too much attitude, but too, too much attitude. Love that. So um, here are our ballerinas. So we're going to start with this light colored fabric. This one is the main print. So a very nice off-white cream. And I love that the ballerinas uh, have different skin tones, different hair colors. So multicultural ballerinas with too, too much attitude. Uh, then we have a light, another light print, just a light floral with some pink and lavender. We bring in some color, uh, a little bit of a light blue. So I threw in some basics in here just to just to kind of play with um, and kind of balance out the bundle. Another beautiful small floral. Uh, these are little bouquets that create a little bow tie and a butterfly. I love that. So then we have another dash flow in the lavender color, picking up all the lavenders. We have a moonscape in the pink. This is an eight piece bundle. And then we have the ballerinas in a little bit larger scale on a light pink background. And then we have the toe, the point shoes hanging beautiful on this pink, pink background. So lot, lots, lots of um, attitude here, I think. Not too, too much. <laughs> Love saying that. We do have the, the uh, ballerinas uh, and a, on, in one yards the, on the white background. So it's called Return of the Chate. <laughs> uh, not Return of the Jetty. It's Return of the Chate. I think it's pronounced that way, although I was never a ballerina. But here's my fabric pull. So I did just one pink, and it's called Grunge Blush. So a little bit darker, but I love it because it has the lavender in it, and so it connects with the lavender. I did two lavenders, so one a little bit darker, just to kind of pop things up a little bit. So the spotted in the aubergine color. Then we have the um, chalk and charcoal in the lilac. That's almost a perfect match here, and it works really well with all the flowers. Then a uh, little bit of light blue, I did the chalk and charcoal in the lake. And if you wanted to add white or create a background, I just kind of matched that white color with um, grunge eggshell or the dots white, which is almost uh, white, just a little off white. So then if you wanted to add a little more color to this, uh, I think this would be beautiful just like this with the blues, um, this kind of staying on this spectrum on the color wheel. But there are some yellows uh, some, and some orange flowers in here in the print. So if you wanted to add a focus fabric that's not one of the main fabrics, the Flow Buttercup would be a great yellow um, to play in there. So would the Thatch Coral, which is kind of corally, peach, almost orange. Or if you wanted to pop it with just a little little sharper darker color dark value I would say the dash flow twilight so a nice bright blue uh, dark or kind of navyish blue not too dark would be really great too because it kind of tones um, that darker value will tone well with the hair of the ballerinas so this is too too much attitude really really pretty Pretty, pretty fabric and uh, great for, of course, a quilt, but think about also bags or, or you can make little uh, travel pillowcases. It's, you know, got to start thinking of those holiday gifts, birthday gifts, stock, stash them up. Be ready, you know. 
Don't put too much pressure on the, on the last minute things. All right. So then I have another one for you. This one is called Soar. This was a pre-order for us. Beautiful collection. Uh, it's a Northcott collection and one of our favorite designers, Deborah Edwards and Men Melanie Samra. So do you remember Sail Away? So yes, yeah, so same designer, so very similar style. So this print is kind of an ombre, so a, a scene, but I, you know me, I love to cut it up. That's why I included it. So we have a dark here on the bottom, and then it goes to the top, um, and there's lighter. So it's very kind of uh, abstract landscape, this print. So it's a 12-piece bundle, and so it has some of their basic will look familiar if you uh, have seen the Sail Away bundle and others. I don't remember what the other one was. Um, Journey was called. Very similar style. So always very popular. So I know this one is not going to hang around very long. Love these teal colorways. Beautiful um, abstract landscapes, kind of like this acid treatment. Here we have another ombre so kind of that stripe which they put in mo almost every collection from dark into light which I love because you could cut it here and you get the lights and you get all the range so I always love to include these in the bundles put it this way so I have another one of the bubble I don't know should we call this the bubble print <laughs> kind of reminds me of that little bubbles so then you know it is sore so we have some birds here some feathers I just love these colors beautiful feathers and birds uh, another textural one it's going into a little bit lighter and even lighter so this is a little bit of a landscape with that bubble texture we got a little bit of trees we got the feathers in the lighter color need a little more room over here two more prints so I'm going kind of from dark to light so here are um, the birds on the light background and finishing with another linear print that is um, in these lightest tones. this one's not ombre so it's just these light tones but I love the little details and textures just gorgeous gorgeous fabric so that's the 12 pieces in soar I did a fabric pool kind of going with the flow um, you know I put this one here because it is ombre so it goes very dark but uh, so I did kind of an ombre feel throughout the whole thing so let me show you I know this is a big pull with it but you know you can you can play with it so it started with a deep charcoal -y colors the spectrostatic gunmetal has a little bit of those white specks in it so it really tones well with the lighter tones as well going into the more deepest blues I did the grunge and the nocturne so the deepest kind of navy-ish teal um, and for more of the teal colors I did the passion and the teal it has some of the green tones in here thatched lagoon kind of a medium one with the teals going into more with the blues we did dash flow in the cobalt to connect with the blues in here and then uh, moonscape spruce for a little bit linear so you can always just choose a few here of course I just couldn't not help myself seeds in the azure um, and then one more on the greener tone is the dash flow in the Aruba light green light tealish color Grunge Grotto will give you more of the bluer tones. And then into kind of the light teal gray, spectrostatic perfect gray, and then chalk and charcoal in the gray. And then I pulled two uh, great, one, one more here on the lightest scale is the Whispers and the Dashing Feather. This color is beautiful because it's light, but it has that greenish hue to it. So it would be a great background but it really tones well with everything. But if you wanted to have a light background to work with this bundle, I would probably go fully white in uh, like a dimpled snow so it would stand out. But this, oh, so many things. 
you could do with this and play with color. I would probably just stay with in this colorway just because it's so gorgeous and it tones really well together. If you wanted to pop it with some, some focus, I would probably just go fully white or uh, a really dark navy to just keep that keep the integrity of the bundle so this is sore sore beautiful beautiful and if you pre-ordered this a lot of you pre-ordered this bundle it is already on its way to you or if maybe you got it already maybe you got it already so what do you think gorgeous yes it is um, I wanted to talk about the the uh, kit that is new. Let me grab this table runner so you can see it up close. It's beautiful. I think it turned out great. So this is the off-kilter runner, which we did for Fast and Furious Club Season 2, the first project. And so uh, I have altered the pattern a little bit just to show you how you can use the fabrics exactly how I, I did here. Um, and it's cool as you go, so it really, once you start, this takes a couple of hours. And so everything is included, all the fabrics are included in the kit, including the binding, including a beautiful back. So all you would need is the batting, and it comes with the pattern in a PDF, and the video class showing you how to put it all together. So that's brand, brand new in the store. And of course, our low volume, Special continues through um, through Sunday. All right. Any questions on this stuff? Do you have questions? We do have a couple. Okay. Let's put them up. I don't want to miss anything to go to the sewing room to check. Does SOAR go with Journey? Oh, yes. So let me show you. So the Sail Away uh, bundle I had the journey from way before, I, I saved some scraps, and then the Sail Away came, so I made the first prototype of the jewel quilt, which will be in the new book. I made a quilt from that, so let me show you how that looks. So that's there, of course, the Sail Away had more of the blues, but the journey had more of the teals like the Soar one does. So they all work together. All of their lines really work well together. So I mixed them, both the, uh, the uh, Sail Away and the Journey, and you, as you can see, same textures, They you could totally mix them in there. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Any other questions? Found another one? I'm going to have a sip while you put it up. Mmm. When you infuse raspberries in with the vodka, do you have to refrigerate it? I tried it and the fruit turned bad and the vodka wasn't drinkable. Okay, so if you do just the raspberries and vodka, uh, you don't ha you should not, if it's, if it's pure vodka, it should be fine. So the fruit will just sit in the vodka. It does not go bad. I usually don't put it in um, the fridge until after a few days because it really infuses fast uh, in room temperature. But uh, once you have it infused, you want to take the fruit out. You don't want to store the fruit with it. But you can just strain it out, and then you can store it. You don't have to store it in the fridge. You can. But if you're making it with sugar, too, if you're making a liqueur, I just made a syrup. So, that's e so that doesn't have any alcohol. So that definitely needs to be refrigerated. But if you're making just vodka, it doesn't have to be refrigerated, but you've got to take the fruit out. <laughs> Uh, with liqueur, I would refrigerate it. Uh, you can remove the fruit, and it you c it's okay to um, store it for a certain time, uh, room temperature. It just lasts longer in the fridge. And so it infuses faster, room temperature. You can even get a lot of flavor out of it in 24 hours, 36 hours, 48, even better. Um, but you don't have, you should be okay with a pure vodka. You know, 40% 40, 40 should be good. But if you, st yeah, you got to take the fruit out once it's infused. All right? Because it doesn't look very good. <laughs> the raspberries turn white because all the color goes into the vodka. It's beautiful. All right. Great question. Oh, I think we got a, um, we got a, we got a spammer on, on, uh, 
on YouTube. Sorry, guys. So just I'm blocking it right now. So just apologize for that. We are blocking that that poster, whoever that is. Well, it's probably a bot anyway. Okay. We have a question. Yes. Here. If you did spin cycle with soar, what will you use for the squares? Ooh, good question, Barb. That's cool. Let me think about that. The one thing with spin cycle, well, I'm looking this way because spin cycle is hanging behind this quilt. Um, the one thing with soar, because the value difference is from the lightest, lightest to the very dark, um, it would create, it would kind of be busy because of the differences in value, but you could maybe do half of them and that would work really well. But if you wanted to use all of them, I would, I would, probably go on another color so maybe pop it with like a red or a, a lavender or something like that fuchsia maybe something that really will stand out because those blues and teals are kind of probably going to just blend in especially when you start mixing all the values so you want it to be something that really pops or even white white would work too all right good question well let's see if we have um a winner Let's see, who's our winner? Ron, is that our, that's, that's a real poster, isn't it? Is that a real person? I hope so, Ron RR. It might be, you know, sometimes it's uh, somebody else's account, but um, congratulations. To claim your prize, send an email to G -E -R, help at geequaldesigns.com and you will, we will send you your gift card and, um, just give us until Monday to read our emails, but uh, we will send that to you right away so you can go shopping. So that is it for us. Uh, we have our next show this coming Tuesday will be 7 p.m. That's June 14th. And then next week will be June 17th. Regular time, 7 p.m. Central on Tuesday nights, and then Fridays at 3 p.m. So looking forward to seeing you all there. Have a wonderful rest of the week. It's going to get hot. Even here in Minnesota, it's already warming up quite a bit. So stay cool out there. Stay inside and sew or uh, hydrate, everybody. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.